And uh, a loss here, oh, it's going to hurt for one of these two teams because then no more chances. Yeah, this is a Zero. great This is a great one. This is already high level, all right? We've already got a very interesting veto to kick things off. The last time these guys played, it was with Lucky yep. on Astralis. But in three maps, Astralis only got 18 rounds. Oof. They got stomped the last time. And this time, they solved a lot of issues with the way that they pulled off this veto. Ancient was the map they won. And as was brought up on the desk, they were able to take Dust2 versus players at this very event. So there is a likelihood that Astralis could pull out both of the first two, Dust2 and Ancient, and actually win this series. And if it wasn't for a good veto, you know, the odds would be very heavily in favor of G2. So that's already a good sign to make this interesting. It'll still be hard regardless. We get a little posturing going down on long. Ooh, they're ready. A little smoke for the cross. A quick burst on the peak. Many bodies all around. Zipix smoked off. Flashbang's pretty persistent. Zipix throws himself through it. Won't uh -oh. bring anybody down. Ooh, that could have been a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Still five T's coming. Blame F. Like shaving off truck. some health. We've got a lot of damage versus G2, but, dude, they are good. <laughs> it is smooth. It is easy. That, they just punctured through that A site like a balloon. They have lost not even that much health overall. And Glaive Hell, I mean, he's going to show up to this, right. this site. See if he can find a kill or two. 1v5 would be amazing. It would be incredible. But that also, not, not seeming likely. Well, and Alexi from the jump up, actually. Just jump up. I want you to say in one full, clear sentence that Astralis are going to win this 2-0. If you believe it, I want you to say it. I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> if you think there's a chance, I want you to say it right now. I think there is a chance that Astralis can win this. 2-0. 2-0. Well, it's not very convincing. Yeah, I don't really think so. Okay. But well. they can, they can, they can. They set up a good veto. It's and on the record. Yeah, Dust2 is a great place to start. That's also, that's just a very good sign. You know, that's a very good sign. And at the very minimum, we should get just a super entertaining best of three ahead of us. Fingers crossed. With qualification looming above these two teams. Which is just all around a really good time. Got a kind of a slow start for G2. And uh, Astralis, for the most part, have they have played uh, well at the RMR. We're a bit stronger in the best of ones. But, you know, again, with that at least one map result versus players, that was already impressive. And I think with both teams starting slow, they have also both just gotten better as the RMR has rolled along. So it looks like a cat take. Might be on the cards here for G2. They set up the cross. Farley in the site. Deagle ready. Oh, Nico, quick headshot. Turns it towards the corner. And there comes Config. In with two Deeks. Are we going to get Berserk mode Config? Still alive and kicking. Glaive's coming out with the scout. Here comes Hunter from CT spawn. And Mac 10 for the double. Well. Alleviates a bit of pressure, gives G2 the second round, keeps two players alive there, so one AK and one MAC-10 move forward. Yep. But Config with a sign of things to come. And this is what we always say about Config. Strong starts, strong performances. Yeah. Slow starts, Mentally. inconsistent recoveries. Yeah, man, yeah, recoveries are really slow sometimes, and yeah, a lot of that is mental, but I mean, a lot of CS is mental. A lot of anything performance-related is mental. It's understandable. Those two one Deeks could inspire hope in the most hopeless. Full on long setup. I think we've seen some kind of weird, I guess, T sides from from G two, where I just kind of felt like they're not they're not really moving with a lot of confidence. Not a lot of layers to their defaults. Right now they press up, make sure there is no mid crunch, but all of the CTs have reorganized. The slink down cat. The flash will land right in their faces. No one playing anti. <laughs> Arms up. And two players down. Oh. The one flashbang that the CTs had was also just thrown forward. So cat really meant to be the contact. Jax takes one to the head. Honestly, we're going to get that 
a close one in, and that's completely taken down. Blame FP250's got something to say about it. Glaive locked behind the mid doors. Make that Muerto sink. Is that a Muerto? No, it's not, is it? I don't know what that thing is. But a couple of a couple of half decent, half decent mm -hmm. rounds out of Astralis. There's, you know, been kills versus G2. It's not all going swimmingly. Yeah. So on the upside for Astralis, just quickly before you get into it, Blame yeah. F, no, pro the most consistent. Still not totally consistent even at the RMR. Again, a little bit better in the best of ones. Config, a little bit up and down, but um, not not doing great right now. I think actually bla uh, uh, Blame F, um, Mini Blame, uh, Sudan, uh, uh, <laughs> Blah. <laughs> <laughs> it was blah blame. I think that's what it was. Said that config was lower rated than Farley and Zipix. I think at this event, which I just took a, a glance at that. I didn't realize it was that bad, but I don't know if Damn. I don't know if that if that is actually um, if the case or if it was just specific series. But that was a little, that's a little bit worrying, of course. On the right side for G two, you know they've got kind of blame F on on one side. On G two, Hunter, Nico are doing great. Monacy's doing really good still. Even though he's hit, had a weird map here or there. So individually speaking, I think more reliable fraggers right now. Yeah. On the G2 side. Undeniable. Farley can be an X factor in my opinion. We saw some good things from him on overpass. Yeah. Yeah, I think he matches the energy of Astralis quite well. Yeah. They needed a plug and play op improvement. They think they've got one. Zipix inside of the pit. Farley going to try to set him up with the flash, but Zipix not too hyper-aggressive. Let's them come to him. And that is Jax taken out of round number four. Astralis looking for their first round win. Farley, ooh, he gets a Lexi B as two of the T's try to jump down into the pit. That's pretty sweet cover, man. They keep it 4v3. I mean, they're Boost. boosting up the cat. Oh, but Config still wins. Yeah. All right, that's that X-Factor frag right there. Hunter had just turned away from it. Yeah. Now they know there is still one player car, and Farley will take his peak. A great flash from Blame F to assist him. Nico onto the op. No Farley's pinned in, so a little patience goes a long way for that one. Thinks maybe there's a flank, and we do have Glaive currently in the suicide halls. Bomb still draw back. Time is getting past the point of Nico being able to recover this, so I'm not sure how far he can get away, but they might give him space and leave him to save and pit. Oh, oh my, hold on a second. Bomb is still back in, in, in the pit, so obviously would have been insane if he could have grabbed it. They'll peek from CT. He's crossing without it. And Glaive's going to end this. Eventually they'll flank. Up. Did yes, he, grabbed. He grabbed it, yeah. yeah. We teleported all of a sudden. And they got two ops now on the CT side. So a little bonus, a little boon. Astralis have been able to wield two ops really well. Config is not an opper, but he has hybrided many times yeah. in his career and done a fantastic job with it. Config a good jack of all trades. Attack pause from G2 immediately after the first round win here from the Danes. And the money is not splendid. Monacy Hunter, quite poor. So... Looks like they'll put up a minor investment. Actually, Hunter will buy, you know, fully. So maybe they do just force this one up. I'm not sure if he dropped anything. Didn't seem to get much for 1,500 bucks. Nico will have an AK. Jax will too. Alexi joins the fray. And all things considered, they could keep the money low. Now the two ops is act. They're in a situation where a real explosive execute could actually be the perfect counter to Astralis picking up two ops, and it's possible that they read into that specific thing. You know, normally versus big explosive sight hits, you don't want to have ops because if you have to retake, ops are not extremely favorable. For the moment, they'll play it slow. Nice need. Wait, was that a T side? Came off of the catwalk, oh. Blame F. I think, and then... I just saw a yellow line with it. I didn't... Oh, yeah, actually, Blame still has his frag. He could have run back cat and grabbed another one, but... Yeah, I don't know. I saw, like, a yellow line. We'll just check after, I suppose. I don't know if it missed by accident or what happened. Oh, Farley, we go for the flick. No damage done there. Nico gets outwards. Wow, they immediately squeeze. Challenging ahead of the hinge smoke. Yeah. 
Glaive could be called into the action. Nico's not watching this. This would have to be a flick reaction. Oh, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. But I think that fast step was heard. He falls back. And they'll use this tiny little bit of leverage. We talked about that burst, that quick explode. It could still come at this B site. Config going to have to lock in middle. Jump around the corner, missed shot. Farley's going to be trying to chance one through smoke. Blame F will kill Jax at least. Then the player who comes through door. Oh, but Glaive with the double drops the bomb into the windowsill. Two versus four situation. Nico looking to come through. Hunter jumping up on top of those boxes. Oh. There's the trade from Nico, but as he looks back to spawn, it is Farley to drop him. Astralis. Two rounds quick. Hey, that's excellently done. That's excellently done. I mean, yeah, they had that two two op setup, and the config misses his first shot could be the scariest point. But you have Glaive to fall back on with some very superb rifling. Didn't really miss a bullet here. Some instant headshots, and finally the trade comes through. But Astralis stand tall, and uh, they actually only take one op forward into the next round. Not sure if they could get close enough to take it back, but they are also going up against a very clearly saving G2 after that investment. Can always come back to the ops later if you'd like. Awkward for Nico. Gonna commit to the fire. Man, that composure. He yeah, just right. acts like there is no molly right beneath him. <laughs> it's like the embodiment of the of the room on fire meme. Yeah. He's chilling. This is fine. Jax eats a little shrapnel. Blame F locking in long. He's got Farley still to work with him. Shadow jump up. Going to be Config's trigger. Kill. Two kills. And we've got Jax with the deagle and the bomb. Minute on the clock. Not going to happen. Blame yeah. F ends it. Astralis, 3-3. Easy does it. Yeah, I got to feel pretty good about that. Now, they did fully invest, and look, Monacy, I mean, he barely has enough money, so instead of going for any kind of rifle with nades, he's going to grab a scout, and the rest of them can buy into AKs. To show you how deliberate that force-up was, they really did put some stock into their odds of winning. Well, they could have saved a bit. Very standard default in this position. I think we're lining up uh, hinge smoke from the back of spawn. And a lurk smoke out towards B. And this is just try to deplete the CT's utility as much as possible without any clear intentions for these first 40 or so seconds. But it doesn't look like there's an overreaction from the CT side. Feeling confident having Farley perched up here on bricks. Flash gets him off the angle, and Nico falling one from that. Middle again, huh? That's the target. Mr. Ross have actually done a good job of holding grenades in this position. But the uh, B split opportunity presents itself to G2. Close door cleaned up. Rifle and spawn. Stockpile of grenades. And the hit's coming. It's actually going to go past the window. Really fast. Nico wastes no time, but dies. Config with just the farm. A single kill. It's Hunter instead to get that double kill inside B site. Wow. They, they, they had are. the grenades down, but I mean, G2 just didn't respect it. Yeah, they didn't respect it. They moved so fast, actually, off of their mid smokes. It was just totally unexpected timing. Astralis could not get ahead of that. They jumped into the window thinking, all right, they're probably going to lurk out mid, maybe five or so seconds before we see them. Yep. Meanwhile, they're already at the door, and Glaive is just trying to get into a position to get vision. Not only Glaive getting into a position that kind of opens things up, but Blame F, also indicative, goes for the you know the little pile of grenades in the corner instead of maybe trying to offer some shots through smoke or whatever, not applying pressure to the back end of that mid push from G2. Yeah. They get through with zero resistance, dude. Cutting through butter. Yeah, actually, you know, just pretty solid game plan so far from G2. Nothing too bad about the way that Astralis played it up until the point of just not expecting the speed at which G2 were going to come. And I'm sure that uh, they'll make sure to be aware of that in the future. But for now, this is an edge for G2. Three saved for Astralis. An attack pause. An attack pause to talk about things. And they have enough money to get what they need. I think this is just talking about how they maybe get that early 5v4. Tight game so far. Yeah, it is very tight. 
It's Both one of those teams. rounds you just kind of let slip, though, if you are the Danes. You know, you're not uh, you're not really too many steps behind on that mid play. Just just like you said, a little minute matter of timing. Just get ahead of this problem right now. Yep. Adjust to the pacing. Adjust to the speed. Slap yourself a little. Wake up. I like that uh, G2 are starting out with some standard defaults as well, just so uh, Astralis don't try like a double up or B push, which they'll throw in uh, a few times a half. I think it's one of the best things that you can do on the CT side, especially with an op. It's just a little bit scary to get that wedge when the T's are going to, you know, maybe full B exec on you. G2, a very powerful one, for example. And... Oh. There's a lot of presence on this side of the map. Ooh, Glaive, Glaive is going to spawn one cross. He's locked in now. They can molly him. So he immediately throws that smoke down. And they actually don't even bother. Okay, now they'll throw one. They wait until that smoke is almost halfway gone before throwing the molly. But it looks like it's all a ruse just to try to get some CTs to cross back to the left side of mid. It'll work out. And interestingly from Astralis, they've maintained this heavy long presence with an AWP as well. I think blue bin is going to be the key position here for Zipix. Will be very hard to expect this spot after they've just shown so much presence on the opposite side of the map. That nade just a couple seconds too soon. Could have done a good amount of damage. Oh, oh, oh they hard cleared. That Nico. flash was perfect. Heads up. They Goes get the right offer back. Hunter going to be cut off. We're going to get the boost up from Farley. If he can kill Hunter, then all the attention can turn towards CT instead. Hunter, ooh, he has multiple chances here. Will combine with Jax to end this. And, ooh, Glaive actually off of the catwalk. Still adding something into the mix. They're not already past ramp into sight. A fight oh. for Monacy gives him the kill versus config. Four versus two. Glaive decides to take a running risk and Jax sends him back to Cat. Blame F 1v4. Oh. An op too valuable to let slide, but he doesn't realize Nico's got him locked in G2 with a fifth. That's solid. I mean, really great kills. Uh, that flash for long was beautiful. The awareness to clear the blue bin. They read into Zipic's position. I thought that if Farley, even though he was on the corner of the long smoke, if he took a shot, then they might he might be able to draw attention and Zipix would have a way in. But again, you know, full blind, he's useless. And then the uh, the retake attempt is a little bit messy. It's three players versus four, and Glaive gets that first kill to make it a three on four. But then they all start peeking uh, individually, trying to pick off the G2 players in case they, they try to rush a plant. But they were kind of very smart about that every step of the way. Pistols here. Nico making quick work of it. Three down already. Zipix looks to leave on a third of his health. And they found Glaive pushing into the tunnels. It's easy here for G2. Round nine wrapped up. Three round lead. Comfortable T side thus far. It's a very strong D2. Very, very strong D2 right now. I think we've seen some good ideas from Astralis. Individually, not exactly on the same level. You know, Astralis beating players on G2 kind of made me put on more Dust stock two. in this. Yeah. But uh, obviously the last time these two teams meet, met, Katowice, it was still with Lucky and not Farley. And I mean, G2 just destroyed them. So I feel like G2 maybe not too intimidated by the recent results. Oh, they're going to peek around the corner. Actually. Nicely done. Again, that flash works out this time. Blame F has one locked behind blue. Jax looking to escape here, shrouded by all of the smoke. Oh, that was nothing short of excellent. Ooh, gets away. And in the meantime, we've got Nico trying to jackknife a play through middle, hunting heads inside of CT spawn. Config going to get his back, but Nico knows better. Look at these lines of sight, just fixated on what could be the Config peak. Smoke and a Molotov to try and get him to commit to this. Waiting for a flashbang to maybe activate. Nico's hunting. Good spam through the CT spawn. That sets up Config beautifully. Five versus two off the back of that one, but a little life. Farley drops the first cap peak. We've got the op in Monacy for the 1v4. He knows Farley's back there. Oh, and Farley's shooting hot. Yes, he's doing well, for sure. That was so sick. I mean, the way that they retook long, they waited on the corner. So many flashes came over the wall, and lots of times in that spot a CT side, you don't bother trying to re-aggress, but they had some great counter flashes that were incredibly effective. The mollies that came out, Blame F's opening kill, Zipix combined right after him, and there was just no chance for G2. And 
Nico, of course, takes the one piece of the map that's objectively open in a spot like that when there's heavy CT aggression in mid, but that's obviously very obvious to the CT side, and he doesn't go too far with it. Nico looking to play this hand again. He won't get revenge versus config because we've got Farley opping in it instead. Yeah, I like them moving the op around. That can be a good idea, and it also opens up the ability to yeah, get deep into B tunnels if they want to. I think we're having a Lurk Smoke come out at the end of it, making this a consistent feature. Really important to disrespect this Long Smoke a little bit on CT side, and just let the T's know you are keeping that info, so they always have to keep an eye on it. But they've got some time on it, and they've got Astralis in a 2-1-2. Cat is the right call. Config versus Monacy here. Both players able to skate by one another. Hunter. Now, typically, you don't want to be in a 2-1-2 unless you have the op on the site. So there'll be some pressure on Blame to over-deliver with his AK. And this nade... Oh, oh, that could be That thick. could be amazing, yeah. Ooh. That couldn't have landed in a better spot. Hunter, Monacy, both at half HP off of that. Plus now an incendiary rate. Oh, oh, oh no, it misses. It. Oh, that, that's going to make things a little awkward. Still recoverable. Blame F. Then misses the jump on top of that. Hunter and Nico in with a kill apiece. Nico's trying to fight down long. I mean, yeah, oof. that was set up so well. It did, I mean, he did such a good job with the HE oh. timing right before they were about to exec. They had a 2 on 2 so they're more worried about A, and Blame recognized that he has to put up some kind of hold if they're going to stop that. Misses a little bit of his movement to jump up on the site, and he did have an opportunity that looked risky, but, I mean, everyone was blind, I think, in front of him. But he drops off the box. Oh, it feels like that could have been another one for the CT side. They would have had G2 running in wounded. Blame looking to rack up costs on Catwalk, but... This is going to be four alive at the end for G2. These guys are moving as a real unit right now. Yeah, nice pack mentality. A little ferociousness there for G2. They don't shy away after being hit by the frag. Obviously, I feel like Blame F going to beat himself up, not only not throwing that incendiary, but like you said, he jumped, you know, a little like weird missed movement, but he didn't get punished for it. I feel like if he did land that jump, if he did commit to the shots, could have taken one, maybe two players with him. They were blind. Yeah, maybe one. But again, it's, you know, you, you're in a 2-1-2. Two -two. They avoided the offer, and they had still one inside of uh, CT spawn, so Cat was the right option for G2. Well played. Farley flashed off the long clash. Series of utility thrown out from Astralis on those long doors. Incendiaries as well being used just in case blue is occupied. So just feigning that little bit of presence and almost Jesus. picking up the cat kill. Blame F nearly loses his head to Monacy. Falls back off that shot. G2 looking to lean towards cat again. I'll make sure Farley can't post up here. Well, this default revolves around not getting opt and keep pushing the opera back into rotator spots. Just get him exhausted. And I love that every round they're maintaining some semblance of B pressure, just keeping the threat of a B hit alive. Blame has had some, I feel, a really good sense of timing when it comes to the cat takes. They're set up in goose, so this round they're hoping it's A. And it looks like the call from Alexi is, is going to be the correct one once again. They've taken it out to mid. They've sectioned out the players inside the site. They spotted one by the door, so they know that one's surely going to be by car. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, it's coming fast. Four tunnels players. Glaive going to shave one off. Config also gets Alexi. This is solid. So far, so good as Config jumps over, oh swoops my down on them. A triple kill with the Fomus off the car move. Man, 2v5 in the site. Not bad at all. They stopped an all. entire B split with one M4 and one Fomus. That is unbelievable. So that is so much better than the previous situation where it was a fast B split and they lost both players, I think, without getting a kill. Day and night. Day and night. Really <laughs> wonderful moves between the two of them. Excellent aim as well, as we saw from Glaive earlier this game. Yeah. Config doing it with a Fomus. Wow. Back 
actually a really good grenade to kick off this round. As we near the end of the first half. Astral is fighting hard. Trying to cut back this lead. Mid pressure yet again. Single flash in from Nico. Play map gonna answer with utility. And they pause. Got everyone on high alert. Defense has been hit from every angle, but there have been some answers back. And we've had cameos from different players on the A side almost every single time. And the utility nice. usage from Flame F continues to be extraordinary, hitting four players with that one HE. Yeah, racking up that grenade damage. Zipic's gonna throw his frag outwards. That's oh more my damage. God. All of this damage by way of frag grenades. That is solid work between Blame F and Zipix to try and set up their team. Farley locks in the door peak, and Blame continues to be this nuisance on ramp. So Alexi B with a quarter health to clutch. A bomb plant desperately attempted. That's going to be the activation from Blame F. This time, they lock it down. That's great. That's great. I mean, Blame's incendiary timings, all his HEs, he's got such a great, great, feel, great feel for each round right now. Nailing two to three players every time. And even though it's unconfirmed, they find out at the end of the round. How easy when that was. When all the assists fill up his kill feed, how much work those nades did. The economy bottomed out. They'll be on pistols in the second to last round of the first half. And honestly, based on how well uh, G2 look like they've been playing, this is very impressive from Astralis. Lexi looking to just be thrown forward. We got Farley ready to welcome him with open arms. And if the op shot misses, Zipix still kind of occupying bottom tunnels. So unfortunately for G2, this is the most stacked position. And they are the least equipped. There it goes. Jax gets hit. Alexi soaring forward. Config gonna recover the shots. Easy does it. Mid completely held here from Astralis. We're talking seven rounds each and a nice resurgence from this CT side. And I think what's nice too is we get these like marked improvements in, in, in what was previously two separate openings for G2. One, Blame F over on A ramp, kind of fumbling grenades, not being able to lock in a hold. And also the time that G2 successfully were able to wrap into the B site, Glaive dies with no kill, Config only gets one off car. We then get, just a few rounds later, a clear improvement in each of those situations. So development within this half. Astralis looking for the lead to end the defense. Yeah, I think you characterized it perfectly. And that explains a bounce back for them now in terms of their you know total round count have no idea how comfortable they feel but this match is going to be so tight i really don't feel like it's going to come down to t side or ct side specifically i think of course astralis have been a fair bit better on ct round by round um but yeah when it's i don't know uh, two teams at this level i can't help but feel like it's just game plan you know more than just their overall map stats that is going to have more of an impact on how the half goes Oh, I think we've actually... I think Monacy literally saw three people inside of mid there. So, looks like the T's are very clear that they should be watching lower, just in case for this push. And the thing is, Config doesn't know it, but they are slowly hunting him down, so he'll smartly get out of there. But on the upside, they'll probably draw out a lot of resources and time from G2 just making sure that lower is clear safely now. Something that at times oh, has come for free. This would be a one, sick the timing. The one round of these last 15 that G2 have not done their lurk smoke into B tunnels. Oh, now they're throwing it. Oh, and the CTs, the CTs are ahead it. of it a little bit. Hunter is watching, but the peak is absolutely perfect from Config. Beautiful response there. Ah, oh, they feign the lower play into the upper push. Left fake, right hook. Config? Ooh. 
God. Bleh. We can just delete the VOD. Yeah, that happened. Now suddenly B site's in question. Oh, this is going to be a weakness. Alexi B just trying to jump spot Glaive back site. Blame F going to lock in Nico, so that's middle at least under wraps for Astralis. Glaive on the platform could just kill them all, but Alexi with a quick headshot entry. Blame F going to lose vision, could challenge the window. That's where Monacy just looks to keep that scout. Remember, we've got limitations. Oh, it's a game of who would you rather be. CTs have a lot of HP. Monacy is only on a scout. But G2 have the sight, the bomb down. Tunnels wrap could be valuable Jack's here. Jack's sitting behind big box, so we should probably... Lexi pushes forward. Farley. Oh, he's going to get that close range off shot. Jack turns his attention, loses his head, and it's on to the kid. The first headshot versus Zippix. No. Second versus Blame. Knows that Farley's coming in from mid. Oh, One, two, three. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's got to be. It's every time. I don't know. It's every time. Every time with this guy. Well, about as he only has a scout here. And... <laughs> oh man, the whippersnapper. Two sick headshots, and at this point, you just you just know he's got it. He's got. You it. can just feel it. Yeah. He just doesn't miss those, does he? No, sir. That's a big play in a round where they didn't have much. Yep. And so with that, we've got G2. That one round edge, eight seven. At the end of the T side, switching sides. G still G2 still the bookkeeper's favorites. Smoke three flashes, frag and a kit. Solid first by Nico. Almost two times the kills of any of his teammates. We come to expect great things from him. Honestly, going to be pressed up close on Cat. Very much alone here with those smoke grenades on Xbox. The two mid players through the doors have nothing to offer us for G2. Nico now inside sight. Can't get those clean headshots, but maybe Hunter coming up from spawn sure can. Config answers. Takes down Nico. Big scalp to drop. Jax with oh, the no. team kill. The, oh, the betrayal nade, bro. Oh, how'd that happen? Ooh, Looks I'd... like it bounced in CT spawn. Yeah. Oh, yikes. That's unfortunate. But four alive for Astralis. They had that uh, wrapped up. Opening duel, one on Cat. Lots of players spotted, but they just continued going 80 miles per hour up and around the corner. Jack's laughing that one off. Maybe he, need, he needed CT. He likes to be jumped into it. Unsure, but this is a tie game now. Three Mac 10s on the plate. Astralis, quick, quick attack into this B site. Config. Oh, easy does it. Two kills instantly. Nico, Deagle on the window, Ooh, dies to the USP. And we just said, right, Nico leaps and bounds above his teammates. But yes. Config, from the very start of this game, yes. from the very start, kicked it off cleanly, convincingly, and now so consistently. He's got uh, 18 from 14 starting out the half. Hold W, hold left click. That's all he's got to do. Now he's going to look to charge down Monacy. Yeah. I mean, he's the kind of player right now when he's playing like this, you just let him be free, honestly. Yeah, look at him go, man. Look at him go. He's just chasing him. He sees bloodlust. Monacy going to take his head off. Good no-scope damage. Glaive's also going to die. So now cost being racked Wait, up. What Three the hell? kills for Monacy. He fights his way out from long doors, upgrades to the AK, and that is a genuine cost to Astralis. Yeah, that was quite expensive. I mean, they weren't supposed to die there. They had two players covering each other outside long. One runs out of ammo. Monacy kills the other one. <laughs> then they're both dead. Oh, uh, thinking that smoke was maybe a bit thicker. Uh-oh. Five, seven, sick. It's great. AK for Monacy, saved from the last round. Imagine if this AK does something. And even if it doesn't, you know, Astralis, they can't really afford these these deaths in this one. This has got to be a nice, clean round from the T side. And luckily for them, they're already convincingly through long doors, but Monacy is also not far off. Yeah, they did find the gap. He's got a fast flank now. It's always, almost always going to be watched. That is a rough spray. It is just a max 10, but they are deciding to duel into spawn this way. They, they've asked for this. Monacy goes down on Cat. And it looks like Config might get caught here no. on Cat. Oh. No, the AK. It oh, becomes Nico. bait, and Config just keeps going, man. He's like a truck right now. 
truck with no brakes. 21 and 11. What the hell was that? <laughs> I think, that's not his fault. I don't know what the hell that was. What was that? I thought, the, I thought physics mattered. Config full focus here. Happy about that one. Oh, Nico reaches for the AK. Yeah. He waited a long time, too, for Config to pop <laughs> oh, off. And man. Config was playing so slow. Brutal timing for Nico, but at least for G2, back in with the buys. Yes. CT side looks to start. Glaive posted immediately on the long corner. Oh, he's going to get... This is brave, but... Two players to peek? Yeah, they, they didn't molly long, so he's probably a little bit worried about it. Wow. Okay. Gets past them. Wow, this is a huge move from Glaive. They don't stick around at all. Yeah, they can take the long control for sure. They'll start throwing grenades. They've also got tunnels. And one back in spawn holding their flank. Catwalk, the looks point like, of interest. Yeah, it looks like Config might have been readying uh, Xbox smoke. But sometimes you got to be careful. Sometimes the Xbox smoke, even just for fakes, because it can be used against you and the CTs aren't, don't have to watch lower. They can just clear out top mid. It gives them less angles, actually, to worry about. And they, they've already taken a look here in mid despite this. And it looks like Blame is just going to come back late long. Maybe supplant Glaive's position. Just becomes a question of getting past the scope of Monacy. Yeah. And of course, oh, they'll leave one in pit so they can reorganize. The only worry we've seen so far from the RMR from Astralis is when they run out of time on their T sides. Yes. And they are taking quite a while to organize considering where the bomb is headed, just crossing 30 seconds. G2 have searched out mid and left it, but there are still some late grenades. So now this is no longer, I think, viable for them. Oh, that clock. You flagged oh, it. Oh, okay. I mean, they're going to go through the smoke, so I, I, I think they kind of want it, but actually Nico is really watching this. 15 seconds, man. Barely any time to spare. They're going to try to run through it. Like you said, Nico just locked in on this. 10 seconds. There's the kill from Farley at the very least from Ramp. Alexi turns around, but Convict hits his head, and the bomb can't be planted. It's not even close, yeah. The clock makes a world of difference, and that is a shortcoming that we red flagged on their overpass plays. Yes. And yeah. here, yet again... Okay, that strat's classic, actually. That um, can work out really well. It looks like a five-long tactic, but they've done a good job of making sure, or just listening and waiting to see if anyone's pushed the top mid. We don't have that info gained from G2. So there is a there is a way that you can actually trade your way up cats and where the CTs all think it's going to be five-long and everyone's starting to work on retakes. And that's where the idea for the strat comes. But in this position, Astralis took too long to organize it. Late smoke comes down on cat, which is very smart from G2 as well. And... Uh, yeah, Nico's awareness was good enough, but it, it looked like we were getting to the point that even if there were no CTs left on A site, they almost would have still ran out of time to plant the bomb, and that's when you know it's taken too long. So that is not a good sign. And honestly, you know, uh, you know that what causes that? The other day, it's it, and the other day, it's well, uh, uh, Blame talked about this. He said like configs or Blame said that Glaze calls are clear, but people just don't understand what they're supposed to do in some of these rounds. Um, for whatever reason that's one you know small black mark but it was a moment that it could have been 11 to 8 yep and versus a team like g2 unless they make similar mistakes these are the ones that will change the course of the entire best of three so that is the main problem with the straws right now sometimes the clock in their t sides can't let it slip. Can't let that avalanche. Alexi, oh man. <gasps> Farley gets Modesty just as the smoke fades. Looks like Alexi wanted to throw down an additional smoke, but Did now that's an open door for them to flood outwards. We've got Nico coming around closer to the corner. He'll be smoked off. Alexi's bomb is good for one. Nico gets not just the kill, but Glaive's health down to 32. And then Blame F doubles back from Big Blue. Frag almost finishes Glaive. Very close. Blame will get the kill versus Alexi, but look at the health that's left for Astralis. Yeah. 29 health between them. Time's pretty good, but it's really hard to mid-round when you've just come back from uh, long control and Glaive misses the shot. That was an opportunity. He kind of recognized the severity of that situation when they were both spotted long because immediately the CTs take over tunnels. They might Swarm. already be top mid. So he comes back for it and takes a risk. I want to point out how good Nico's rotations have been so far this game. He is—he was the guy to smoke cat in that last round. Watch it. 
and yep. make sure that his teammate doesn't get flanked. He's been really good about supporting everybody when he's come in. His timing's been actually exquisite so far and kind of quietly doing so. He's never been in a flustered moment when he's found these frags. Props to Hunter in that last round as well. Kicks it off with the risky mid-peak. He's playing behind Xbox. Gets the guy in the cutout top middle. No coverage. Oh, Zipix. Zipix okay. of all people. What the hell? Let's go. Hello. Uh, seven kills in from him. And it's a bit of a beauty. That's a big one. Wallbang scout headshot. And I wonder if the mental of Astralis has rocked a little bit. We don't have that much money left over. From that clock round. Could be. Could be. You know, it's the thing that can tilt. You know, someone misses an eight, that can tilt you. So you lose to the clock, that can tilt you. Because that, that, those are two things where you're beating yourself. You're, it's not even your opponent anymore. So I'll see if they can survive it. Still plenty of rounds left to go in this in this one half of this game. It's definitely still anyone's Final match. Ten. Nades negligible. Farley still locked behind Xbox. Oh, nice play. Nico reads it like a book. Config not going to be able to get his name on this one whatsoever. Glaive going to draw the attention of Nico. And the third one gets away from him. The lower tunnel's deagle kill. Nice tag there. Monacy's dropped to 12 HP from the scout. Primary scouter. Zipix is putting in some serious work here in round 21. And blame F's long arms reach for the A1S. Can't Alexi wait. very alone on A. Yes, and he is floating right now. Cats, not a bad spot to go to. Oh, this is winnable. Just don't lose to the clock. 30 seconds. And they're stuck worrying about this mid-B setup, but Alexi won't hear this run across, so I don't know. He, he leaves it open. Yeah, he, he could get caught on the fallback. He'll spot one now. Oh, lucky for him. Oh, bad flash. Yeah, he's not in a position to retake this. He'll have to let the bomb go down. Oh, Rotator gets caught. Blame didn't have armor. Zipix still... Trying to put in more work on this scout. He has done a lot already. Farley drops to CT spawn. Bomb is planted for Cat, yeah, which will not be held on to. As long as Zipix doesn't get peaked from long, then he could technically cut off Cat himself. Farley's going to try to pressure Alexi. Then that run from Catwalk offers up one kill. Farley trying to keep Jax at bay here. Alexi just, eventually going to come back to the corner, but the time. They just have to keep him in spawn. They time can, is a genuine issue. Oh, the, can they even get to it? Farley is doing a good job of keeping Alexi off of this. A dink on top of it. The defuse being stuck. It comes dangerously close, but <laughs> yeah. they got it. Okay, well, Monacy recognized what? the most important part of that was literally not dying because if he's standing up above him on cat, Farley cannot rotate out of spawn, and that's the only way he can stop the bomb from getting defused. So Monacy dying means the round is actually over, and as much as he wanted to probably take that fight, he had Alexi on long corner to make sure that he could draw attention. So, yep, they did a good job managing their time. And even though it came down to the wire, they pretty much had him dead to rights. It was an interesting move for Farley to drop in a spawn, but they probably felt like it wasn't over. They didn't have armor. They just picked up those M4s. And, uh, you know, Zipix had a scout and they were low. So don't always want to be hypercritical when uh, people feel like they just haven't won the round yet. But that's when it definitely fell apart. Alexi inside of the pit. Want to see covering? Doesn't no flashes just yet. Alexi will see this. That nade will. Oh. That nade's gonna have high impact. Yeah, that's config down to 44. Of course, they're, Alexi's position known, but it's more so about Monacy. They're really timid about the way that they're approaching this Tunnels push. Got long hit. Jax just died trying to get through tunnels on his own. He had Hunter not too far behind him. And with that, quick transition from Astralis back into middle. They'll lose config, what was left of him, yeah. on the long doors. Lower tunnels into upper. Interesting. They're still stuck. The CT's actually... Okay, they free up a rotation. Nico says, Man, I don't think they're going to go cat. Walks up into mid-B. Dangerous jiggle, but... Yeah, we've seen this jiggle be very dangerous. If he gets away with it, that smoke is going to be pretty damning. And, oh, it's actually a molly from Hunter. Throws it down, holds them off. 25 seconds Ooh, to the clock. Time's a problem. They're so close to the site, you think they're still going to try to get into this. They will. They're going to try to just hammer their way through. Hunter and Nico. Kovacs up to bat. Keeping eyes on the cross. 14 seconds again. Astralis, don't be victims of the clock. They've got five to spare. Bomb thrown down to the dirt. Hunter locking in this round win. Astralis fumble it. Yes. As they tried to find 
gotten their footing in this B site. That is 12 to the G2 CT site. That was very nice from Hunter to allow Nico to take contact from the door before swinging himself. Plus, they had supporting Flash to come in. No smoke for it. No smoke. And, uh, yeah, uh, it was a late round situation after they fell out of mid. I think uh, Astralis, they wanted long, but they weren't willing to commit very hard to get pit control. And that allowed Alexi to be very comfortable. He ate one grenade, threw one back, jumped up, used a support smoke from Monacy, and then hunted down Config, who was crossing back from the blue bin. And that in itself was 40 or so seconds. So that was a huge win for the CT side. And Nico, once again, with a very smart and careful and calm looking rotation. But genuinely, he's had a very, very good read for what Astralis wanted to do, whether he realizes it or not. And so, pretty much only positives when we talk about G2 so far. And Astralis are still somewhat close, but that lead could thicken with Astralis on a half buy. Looking to Farlig to try to make something happen. Farley. Farlig. Would I say dangerous? Good. as the Deagle shots ring off, and then leaves on the reload. What are we talking? Blame F and Farley, looking to be the jackknives. It's been very hard to find gaps now, hasn't it? Yeah, Nico, I mean, Nico's been pretty everywhere in the terms of, like, coming for cat peaks, falling back into CT, rotating to B properly, yeah, and but never that... really putting himself, like, into a risky spot. No, it never looks like he's, uh, like, he's, al he's always there well before. Yeah. Like, right here, he's making another ex insanely smart rotation. He's hard to find, and yet always nearby they're basically just coming to him he's not going to them we got two smokes for this one from astralis gonna try to get themselves up catwalk nico locking into the goose another round where we're playing with only 25 seconds still looking to get inwards config drops to the ct spawn nico flashing himself outwards gets two kills and if i'm not mistaken that spawn is still just stagnant on cat no entry no momentum no no boulders rolling forward no successful frags, no opening, and it just fizzles out again. And those, those, that flash timing from Nico was so, so perfect. Good. He threw his palm tree flash. So the one you throw from Goose that goes into the palm tree, you can't dodge it because it pops Ooh. in the in the palm tree leaves, so you don't even see it. And then the second one goes off the wall as soon as the guy turns the corner, he's dead. And that's once again, Nico in the right spot. I mean, there's a plant if Nico doesn't exist here. And we saw him rotating up even before Astralis started jumping up on Xbox. So they're making it look easy. Yeah, good reads, good rotations. And at this point, nothing from the T side yeah. since the first three. Quick fight down to the tunnels. Hunter locks in two. Glaive and Blame F on the receiving end of the tunnels push. Here comes Config with a bit of life. Fights out past blue box. They could just try and transition straight into the A play, but we already have G2 scrambling back over. It's hard. They're still worried about this op. They don't know if Monacy's rotated out. They've got to either Everybody's take a risk here. and not clear car or... Flash for long is wow. superb. Wow. Jax sets up Hunter excellently. Yeah. And that is Hunter with three kills on the round. Monacy going to take up the helm. But they are pushed a little bit closer than he peaks. Frag comes over. Chip damage versus Farley. Config on a quarter. More damage done here by the utility. And Nico's going to just post oh. himself on top of boxes to drop Farley out of this one. It is only Config left. He is blind as a bat and a dead man down. Insane. G2 They're CT side going swimming. It's amazing. They're actually playing, uh, yeah, insane CS right now. Every flash timing is solid. All these smokes are overwhelming. They're taking all the right space. They're not even taking any overt risks. They're in the mines right now of Astralis. The T side is starting to fall apart. Another rough buy as they defend against 15. They could have saved and played for OT, but yeah. they're gambling on this one. Trying to break through. Civics to the pit. Dead. 
Damn, Nico just taps. 26th kill for Nico here. He is way too much to handle. Sticks around. Gets a little stuck up on Alexi B, but they both survive. Nice nade damage. That's poor Farley dropped to half. And remember, he's just working with the scout, so it goes from bad to worse. And look, they're already flanking long. Yeah, dude. Yo, G2 has Astralis. It's as if somebody sent them the playbook. Yeah. Confi trying to jump up. He's got the offer of Monacy standing in the open. Good smoke cover for Monacy. Config goes for the CTP. That's one. He could be the heroics, but we do get this wrap around from Long. And Alexi in the meantime offering up more impact. Jax Jesus. catches Flame F. Glaive, all that's left. One versus four, and it's shut down by Hunter as it is G2 to 15. That's beast mode, man. That's beast mode. That's definitely the best CT side so far I've seen at the RMR uh, for, for Dust 2. Really incredible stuff. They're just moving so fluidly. There's actually so many things that have just gone so well, and uh, there's no money here for Astralis. They're getting Galil, Scouts, maybe an AK. But one thing's for sure is they're buying. But they made this bed for themselves, buying in the last one. Trying to keep G2 off 15. CT side can do no wrong. Nico is everywhere, every step of the way. Currently holding 109 ADR, 26 and 16. Config not far off, but... Uh, and the main difference is it's Nico's made it so easy for himself by just being in his position five minutes early Yep. every time. Steps ahead. He's got a really good read at the moment. He is in the flow state. The Astralis are in the danger zone. They're going to try to just pummel their way into this B site. Jax with one. Monacy blinded, finds Blame F on his cross. Jax right back at it. Four down, five down. Not one point of damage in that last round from Astralis. They had a decent showing in the first 15. They switch sides, win pistol, convert for three, feel good. And then G2 just has their way. They got decimated. That was unreal CS from G2. That was really, really good.